What's good everybody and welcome back to another car review here on the driveway where this week whew, I'm pretty sure you guys have a pretty solid understanding of what's good because this time the folks at Lexus decided that we needed a taste of one of their most beautiful yet one of the most intricately designed vehicles that they've ever created. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the 2019 LC 500. All right, boys and girls, so let's get this show on the road. And first things first, it is time to fire this baby up. Now, there is one thing that I must explain about my test car before we do anything else, in that it is not the snarling, fire-spitting, naturally aspirated V8 version that so many enthusiasts like myself have come to know and love so far. No, this one is a bit of a gentleman's GT, if I can call it that, because this is the LC500 Hybrid. But just because it says that down there on the lower side sill doesn't mean that this thing doesn't have some serious performance credentials to back up its svelte design but one of the most unique things at least upon initial glance is the way you get into this car so you have lexus's newer key fob here uh, beautiful design in and of itself you got lock unlock trunk panic uh, the usual spiel with the releasable keyblade out of the bottom but as you approach the car you'll notice that the door handles are actually hidden flush into the doors themselves there's no exposed handle and there is no external button that allows you to push it to unlock and lock the vehicle instead with the key fob on you to get in you just push on the front edge of the handle and as you can see that unlocks the vehicle but Lexus didn't want to just stop there no to get out of the vehicle and lock it you can either just easily hit the lock button easiest thing you could ever do or to be a little bit more glamorous you just simply push on the back edge of the handle again with the key on you and as you can hear, that locks the vehicle. And of course, upon unlocking and locking the vehicle, this car's uh, power folding exterior mirrors will either fold out when unlocked or fold in like they are now when you lock it. Now once inside, of course, starting this vehicle is an absolute breeze. Just have the key fob anywhere within the vehicle, foot on the brake pedal, and hit this aluminum blue start button for this hybrid model up here on the dashboard, and... Now, of course, at first glance, the big thing that sticks out about this car is its exterior design. Like I said, I truly believe this is the most beautiful creation that Lexus has ever created in its entire existence. Not to mention, I love the dimensions of this car, the long hood, the medium-sized greenhouse at the middle, and the short little deck lid at the back, which is all the characteristics you need for a true GT car. But of course, being a Lexus, stuff like this doesn't exactly come cheap. Cheap. The base price of a 5 liter LC500 is about $92,000 and change. However, with everything in place here on my hybrid tester, you're looking at a wallet busting $108,600 as shown here. Now, aside from its drop dead gorgeous looks and wallet busting price tag, the LC500 carries a features list that most would actually find on a lot of Lexus products. However, for this car, as you would expect, they've been presented in a little bit more of an artistic way and you can definitely see that just here at the front starting off we have the standard tri lobal led projector headlights these do have uh, a standard intuitive high beam assist system as part of this car's standard lexus safety system plus down here we 
have the traditional L-shaped uh, automatic daytime running lights. Those are also LEDs. Same with the vertically stacked LED turn signals, along with the hidden uh, air skirts that are going through the front corners of the fascia that then exits out of a little pocket back here just in front of the front wheel. Here in the middle, of course, we have a large demonstration of Lexus's corporate spindle grille finished here in a beautiful dark metallic gray. You do have the uh, blue outlined Lexus badge, of course, signifying that this is a hybrid. And to be honest, I've not exactly been the biggest fan of uh, Lexus's spindle grille, but here on the LC, I think they've presented it in the most beautiful fashion as you would expect. A couple of other things worth note, uh, my tester does have the optional convenience package, which uh, one of the features is the intuitive park assist. So you have a couple of sensors here on the front and also on the back. Now, as if the concept car styling of the body wasn't enough, another thing that makes this car look like it was ripped straight off the pages of an artist's drawing board, it would be these, the optional 21 inch polished and painted aluminum alloy wheels. Now the standard LC comes with 20 inch wheels, but these I think are the more desirable option. They're wrapped in 275 35 RF series Bridgestone run flat tires. And aside from the size of the wheels, the other notable thing is the size of the brakes. We have almost 16 inch rotors here in the front and 14.1 inch rotors in the back. Behind that we have a multi-link suspension set up front and rear coupled with Lexus's adaptive suspension. So even though this car is riding on these massive ass rims, it actually is quite the comfortable vehicle when cruising down the road at pretty much any speed. Now, as you follow the curvaceous body lines of this LC down the side, of course, most of the features that you're gonna see on this thing are pretty much standard Lexus-ish slash luxury car features that you'll find on a lot of other high-end vehicles, including the power folding exterior mirrors, which we saw earlier, laced with a little bit of chrome and the usual uh, body color matched exterior here with the LED turn signal in the middle. These are also equipped with the standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. Of course, you have the standard keyless access with the flush mounted door handles that I mentioned earlier but we have an additional option up here on the roof the full uh, genuine carbon fiber roof up here on the top is a part of this car's optional performance package now there are a couple of little extras here on the outside that let you know this car has that feature but the main one of course is the full carbon roof now as if the air skirts at the front of this LC weren't enough of a hint as to the aerodynamic aids that this car has if you look here just behind the doors, you also have another large inlet uh, just here again behind the rear door line. Now these are still functional. You do have the exit right here just in front of the rear tires. And of course, this being the hybrid, Lexus has decided to place its multi-stage hybrid badge down here on the outside of those air skirts. But as you come around the rear, this is the part that I really love about this car because this car has some serious rear hips on it. Just look at those haunches. But if you look at the taillights here, even more interesting is these LED light bars, the L-shaped LED lights. It almost looks like there's, looks like there's more uh, that go further into the taillight itself, but it's actually just a bit of a reflection, just again, uh, to give this car a little bit more of an artistic flair. As you look underneath, you do have the vertically stacked uh, turn signals as well, along with, again, those sensors lining the rear part of this vehicle, again, part of the optional convenience package on my test car uh, and the intuitive parking assist as the engine kicks off just to kind of save a little bit of juice there. Another hint that this car has the performance package is this, the speed activated rear uh, spoiler. Now you can actually manually activate this thing while the car is standing still. You just have a button in the center console and that can raise the wing uh, up or down automatically. Now, being that the LC is a very long vehicle, you would expect there to be at least some form of rear cargo compartment. But unfortunately, here with this car, you're not exactly going to get practicality here. This thing is built more for performance and luxury than most other accommodable vehicles. So you have a little button here on the tail light, you push it, that opens the trunk, or you can use the key, whichever you prefer. And when you actually open the trunk, you're looking at around maybe five and a half cubic feet of space total. The floor is very shallow. You couldn't even fit maybe a sizable box back here, let alone a small suitcase. That'd be about as much as you could possibly put back here. And even 
even so, you lift up the floor, there's a battery there, and there's a tool kit underneath. So really not the most accommodable vehicle here as far as bigger two-door GT cars go. So now getting to the area that matters most of all, it's fair to say that the interior of this LC500 gives off just as much of an artistic and beautiful flair as the exterior. Now there are quite a lot of things to cover with this interior, but a few of the noteworthy ones just to start, uh, starting with these seats. They're very similar to the seats that you would find in something like an RC or an IS. They're very heavily bolstered. Uh, they can be a little bit constrictive if you're a little bit of a wider set person, uh, but also thanks to the performance package here on my tester, these are not solid leather seats. They have the Alcantara uh, inserts here in the middle, and the Alcantara doesn't stop there. It actually goes up to the headliner as well. Uh, again, another feature included uh, in the performance package. Both of the front seats, they're heated and ventilated. They're both multi-way power adjustable, and of course, they have memory settings here for the driver's seat three persons to be specific, along with all of your usual uh, electronic controls here uh, on the door as well. Now, once you're actually sitting inside the LC's cockpit, it is a very snug environment here, uh, to say the very least. I'm six foot one, and uh, I don't exactly feel like I'm cramped, but I'm getting the sort of same driving impression that I would in something, again, like an RC or an IS. Uh, the car is very low, so the step in height, you do have to step uh, a good bit down uh, and in in order to get into this car comfortably. But like I said, there's a lot to cover, so let's start with what's here in front of you. You got a full leather wrap steering wheel, perfect portions here at nine and three with a stitched airbag cover right here in the middle and before I continue can I just make note of this interior color it's known as toasted caramel and with the nightfall mica exterior that we have on my particular test car I think this color combination works so well going back to the steering wheel all the typical controls you would expect you got the aero pad up here uh, for the thin film transistor display that comprises your gauge cluster uh, you have the button that can shift the main gauge over to the right giving you more access to more information. Uh, you have hands-free Bluetooth with voice recognition, a few hands-free radio controls such as your volume control. Uh, over here on the right, you have your lane departure warning, uh, as well as the distance sensor and functions for the dynamic radar cruise control, as well as a few uh, additional buttons for the hands-free radio controls. Now, even though this is a hybrid, you do have these large uh, magnesium paddle shifters here on the back, and they are extremely responsive. Uh, again, with this car's new multi-stage hybrid system, you give them a pull, the shift are almost instant. Uh, it feels like you're driving a supercar uh, more than sort of a luxury, uh, decent sized GT car. If you go up behind there, you do have your automatic headlights, as I said before, with the auto high beam assist, your intermittently timed wipers over here on the right. And then way up here, these two little stocks are your drive mode select. So over here on the left, uh, you have your traction control button uh, on the outside to turn it off as well as the snow mode. But then over here on the right is the drive mode selector. There are six different different settings just within this little knob alone. So if you twist it up, as you watch the gauge cluster change, that puts it in sport or sport plus. If you push the button here on the side, that puts it into normal mode. And also you can customize your settings uh, through that button there. So you can tailor your driving experience just so. But then you also have comfort and eco mode here uh, when you twist it down and then that puts the gauge cluster back into a more normalized setting. Moving on over here to the left-hand side of the uh, steering column for just a second, there are a couple of other little buttons. Uh, first off, the nodule for the power tilting and telescoping uh, steering column that is over here, hidden more towards the back of the steering column itself, uh, but it works just fine. You have the trunk button over here on the left. My tester has the optional heads-up display way up there at the top of the dash, as you can see. Uh, this button here allows you to either turn it off, uh, or if you go into the gauge cluster, you can raise the height and uh, adjust the brightness, and then also, you have the button to open the fuel door, which in this case, I've not had to use that once, uh, unlike in the gas version, which I would probably had to have used at least a couple times already. So now as we move over here into the center console, the first thing that I wanted to point out is that if you get this particular interior color, there is one little grievance that I have in that if the sun is actually aiming right through the windshield at you, this little colored portion up here will actually reflect the color up here onto your navigation screen. So that can be a little 
little bit of a hindrance because then it almost blurs out the entire screen itself. So if you get a car uh, with say a black or maybe a dark gray interior, that won't be as much of a hindrance. Uh, but here with this toasted caramel uh, leather, that has been a little bit of a problem here um, during my time spent with this car. Now, the one praise I have to give uh, the center stack here, moving even down here to the middle, is just how clean it is. There's actually no buttons uh, for even simple functions like the heated and ventilated seats. That's all done up here uh, through what I believe is either a 10 and a half or at least a 12 inch uh, screen up here on the dash. Now we've covered Lexus's uh, dynamic navigation system multiple times before, so we'll just kind of go through things uh, a little bit quicker than usual. The control station here in the LC uh, for the navigation is all done down here. So your dial here in the middle, uh, that's the power and volume knob here for the radio. Uh, you have your other functions, your radio and media buttons like Bluetooth and whatnot, seek track and radio tuning buttons up here as well. But then you also have Lexus's remote touch interface, which I've never exactly been a fan of. Uh, it can be a little bit haphazard, but here in the LC, it's actually pretty acceptable uh, to say the least. Some of the buttons, you have your map, uh, you have your menu to go through the uh, Lexus app suite. So you have your destination, audio settings, Bluetooth phone, different applications such as active traffic. Um, you do have your projection settings, which this car does have uh, at least Apple CarPlay and uh, Amazon Alexa uh, compatibility. Uh, you do have more things like vehicle info setup and even the climate function, which if I go in there, uh, not only can you see your climate settings, but if I go way over here, as you can see, these are where you find the functions for the heated and uh, ventilated seats here for the front occupants. If you go back to the map, it's pretty much like all the other Lexus, Toyota-ish uh, navigation systems that you'll find on the market. Really nothing too um, outlandish or, or crazy, you know, nothing like Google Maps or anything like that. Um, but you can actually use the um, touchpad to kind of pinch and uh, zoom in and out of the uh, the map settings as well. So that's kind of cool. It's a little bit more like a smartphone. Uh, some of the earlier versions of, that I played of with this uh, weren't exactly as responsive or as nice, I guess, as this one. Um, so I'm glad to see that Lexus is updating their system uh, consistently. So you also do have a little helper screen that can actually come up here uh, on the side through this little tab here down in the lower right. This can control things such as navigation, audio, uh, climate zones, and so on. But I prefer uh, to actually leave this uh, completely and totally full screen. You do have a rear backup camera that goes in coordination uh, not only with the uh, intuitive park assist here with the convenience package, uh, but as you can see, you also do have the rear view uh, camera. You also hear the chime because this is a hybrid letting you know that the car uh, is still in reverse. Um, it does come with trajectory, so the lines will sway either direction uh, whenever you put the car in reverse and uh, turn the steering wheel. Go ahead and put that back in park here. One of the things I've been enjoying dramatically with this car is the updated Mark Levinson audio system. It is uh, a pretty decently priced option here uh, on my tester. Now, normally this comes with a Lexus brand audio system, but when you upgrade to the Mark Levinson system, it really does make a huge difference in your music experience. Now moving things along from the infotainment display, we get down here to what is probably one of the most simple climate control systems that I've ever come across. Just one single little row of buttons right here across the middle of the center stack. Over here on the left, you have your automatic settings. You can turn the AC off. Your temperature functions are either of these little switches here. Uh, you can synchronize them both together so they can work at the same time, or you can control them independent of each other. Fan speed, that's here in the middle. Your uh, air conditioning recycling over here uh, just to the left or the right of that, excuse me. And then you have your front and rear defrost over here on the far right switches along with your heated exterior mirrors. As you continue on down from that, you do actually have a CD player here in this car. I don't know of anybody that uses CDs anymore. Everybody's gone to Bluetooth and MP3s and stuff, but Lexus wanted to make sure that just in case you're a little bit more old school than most, you actually still do have a place uh, to put your compact discs. Now, as you move on from that, you get down here to not only the gear selector for the multi-stage hybrid uh, combination automatic and CVT transmissions, and more on that here in a minute, but you also have one decently sized cup holder, which I have a bottle of water there for reference, and you also have the remote touch interface pad, which we just covered a moment ago. Now, the gear selector itself is connected to, again, Lexus's new multi-stage hybrid transmission. So, in essence, in short, rather, um, 
Instead of just a normal CVT transmission, Lexus decided to combine it with a traditional four-speed automatic. So you have four solid gears, and then you have the CVT, which takes over and gets you over 35 miles per gallon. But the gear selector itself is actually pretty cool. So it's leather wrapped. You got a little bit of metal here uh, around the middle. Uh, you pull it towards you to go into neutral. You can pull it back towards you like this. Uh, that puts it in drive, putting it over and up that puts it into reverse, and if you pull it straight back, that will actually put it into manual mode, but you have to be in drive first uh, before you put it into manual, so uh, you may end up making a mistake at one point and pulling it straight back, and then the vehicle just tells you it can't go into, um, it can't go into manual mode unless in any other gear. Park, that's a simple one. There's a little button right here labeled P. Once you hit that, the doors unlock and uh, you're able to exit the vehicle safely. Other than that, you do have uh, your automatic brake hold here as well. That's this little button in the front. You have your button for EV mode uh, so you can cruise around on electronic power alone. And then I talked about that speed activated spoiler uh, earlier on the exterior. And this is the button here that can actually allow it to raise manually. As you move here towards the back, you do actually have a sliding uh, center console. So you push on that little tab there that can slide it forward and back. Um, this is actually sort of acting as a second cup holder right here. You can put something like your phone uh, here, for example. That's a nice little easy slot. Um, but then even, like I said, a bottle of water can fit right there. It's not exactly the most stable thing uh, as far as a cup holder, but again, it does work all the same. And then if you want to get into the center console, you can pull up and it opens up sideways, thus revealing a, a pretty sizable amount of storage here um, in the middle. Now, if you're looking for any form of a sizable GT car, specifically one that accommodates at least four people, then the LC500 is not that car. And I'm not even going to attempt uh, to sit here in the back, but you lift up on this little latch here on the passenger seat, push it forward. And as you can see, the seat now power extends all the way forward, thus allowing access to what is essentially a non-existent rear seat. Now, if you do want to put somebody back here, which I actually did have someone here behind uh, this front passenger seat, the seat is pretty much going to be all the way up to the dash. I know I had my girlfriend in here. Uh, she's five foot four, and she still had her knees squeezed almost all the way up to the dash uh, when we had a person who I think was about five, six, five, seven uh, here in the back. So again, if you're looking for a vehicle with any form of a usable uh, rear seat, at least making it a two plus two, you're not going to find that sort of vehicle here with the LC500. Alrighty, so we are on the road now in the LC500 Hybrid, a car that I never expected to be behind the wheel of anytime soon, but Lexus gave us the opportunity, so how does it feel? Well, for starters, like any other Lexus product, it's extremely quiet, especially with this one being the hybrid model. It feels very well screwed together, and it feels like it could go on for hundreds of thousands of miles without a single solitary issue. But this being the more performance-oriented hybrid, or at least one of them out there on the market, let's talk a few numbers to begin with. Power comes from a three and a half liter double overhead cam V6 that makes 295 horsepower by itself. Now this is basically the same engine that you'll find in the ES, the GS, the IS, all of Lexus's 350 models. But it's paired with a permanent magnet synchronous electric motor and a lithium polymer battery cell, which, once you add that all together, makes 354 total system horsepower, which doesn't exactly sound like a lot, not just by the size of the car, but also considering that for the V8, you get 471 horsepower, but a lot less gas mileage. Speaking of, Lexus rates this LC500 hybrid at 24 in the city and 35 on the highway, and during our week of testing, we've gotten about pretty much on par with what the EPA claims for this car. About 24 to 25 city driving, especially when you consider I drive most of my driving in the city, and about 36 to 37 on the interstate highway. Now, once you add all of these performance characteristics together and coupled with the fact that my tester with uh, the options list that it has does also come with a limited slip differential, zero to 60 in this car is somewhere around five seconds. I've heard numbers tested as low as about 4.7, 4.8, and about as high as maybe 5.1 to 5.2. Now, I'm not one to say that I love hybrid cars by any stretch, but all I can tell you is if I come up here to the drive mode, 
twist it into Sport Plus, pop it back into manual mode here, pop it down a couple gears, it's extraordinarily surprising. <laughs> wow. All I can say is that engine just screams. that it says hybrid on the side of this thing. All I care about is how big of a grin does it put on your face. And for lack of a better term, and pardon my French, it puts a real shitty grin on your face. It really does. It is just so much fun. Now, as you probably can see, we're actually on a little bit of a back road right now that's got a couple of speed bumps. And like I said, with this car having the adaptive suspension, and even though it's riding on 21 inch wheels and tires, the ride is actually surprisingly composed. I was exa actually expecting it to be a little bit more on the harsh side, uh, especially like as we go over some railroad tracks here. Like I said, it's extraordinarily comfortable. It really is a true GT car, but I dare say it's even as good as something like an Aston Martin DB11. Again, two plus two with not really much of a usable back seat, a screaming engine up front, and a very comfortable and composed ride altogether. To anybody out there who thinks that hybrid cars are boring by any stretch, you need to get your butt in the driver's seat of one of these. So one of the other fun points about this car is actually its handling characteristics. Now with the uh, performance package in this car, aside from the limited slip diff, which is actually a separate uh, option on its own, this car actually has what Lexus, I believe, calls VGRS, which to my understanding is variable gear ratio steering. So the steering system uh, at lower speeds can, very, can be very comfortable. Um, it's a little numb on turn in, especially, you know, if you're in uh, comfort mode or even normal mode, it drives just like a normal Lexus, very soft and very, you know, compliant. But if you start pushing this car through a corner, especially in Sport or Sport Plus, it really does wake this car up a lot more. So overall, what are my impressions of the LC500? Well, putting my giggly, joyous inner enthusiast aside, for $108,600, you really could buy quite a few other vehicles that have just as much capabilities as this car. But the LC just feels that two or three notches higher up the ladder. So is it worth the money? On one hand, my heart says yes. It's a beautiful car. It snaps necks everywhere you go. And I'm not just talking about yours when you put your foot down, but it just feels like it could go on forever. And I feel like I could do a thousand miles in this car. I really, really do. It's just such a pleasant experience to be in. Well guys, that wraps up our time here with the 2019 LC500 Hybrid. I do hope you guys have enjoyed this review and drive, and if you have, please do give this video a thumbs up, and also be sure to click that subscribe button down below for many more videos like this and more to come in the future. And also, while you're at it, be sure to check out my other forms of social media to keep in constant updates with all of the newest vehicles that will be coming on the channel. But as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review, and I will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Stay safe.